physiology of pain. Um, synaptic transmission is pain is transmitted obviously by the nerve cells through the body on the cellular level by chemical reactions. And the way that these chemical reactions are transmitted is through a neurotransmitter. And that's a substance that is released by the neuron and affect another neuron in two ways. It either facilitates or polarizes the cell, so it activates it, it makes it excitable, or inhibits or depolarizes the cell. <coughs> so, when the cell body is polarized, the action potential travels down the axon, and the action potential travels to the axon terminal, and the neurotransmitter is released into the, to the chemical or into the synaptic cleft. So this is the end of that tail and those little branches at the end of the tail and what happens is that electrical impulse triggers the release of a chemical. This chemical is released into that space and then the branch looking parts or the dendrites of the the next uh, nerve cell has little receptors on it and what they do is they as these chemicals bind to the receptors and then either they continue that that electrical impulse or they will stop that impulse. So the neurotransmitter is picked up by the dendrite of the cell cell body and the body is polarized or depolarized. Now, you all, so types of neurotransmitters, the ones that facilitate neuro or uh, continue the action potential are glutamate and substance P and the in type of transmitters that inhibit the synaptic transmission are beta endorphin and or dynorphin. And you'll kind of notice that they sound like these two sent the inhibitors sound like uh, medicine. That's because that pretty much they are natural uh, painkillers that the body makes on its own. And so whenever you take something like morphine or Tylenol or uh, Aleve, Advil, what happens is that, is that chemical from that pill gets into your bloodstream, gets into the synaptic cleft, and then it starts binding to these receptors. And so when that pain transmission, uh, the neurotransmitter from the pain is going through the synaptic cleft, there's nowhere for it to bind, and so it stops the pain. So all information about our environment is transmitted to the brain by peripheral receptors. There's, these receptors are involved in the transmission of pain are superficial and these are usually in the uh, surface of your skin and they detect different things like warmth, cold, touch, pressure, vibration, tickle, itch, and pain from the skin. Then you have deep receptors that are actually in the body. These detect joint position, um, how help in the movement of your body, they detect deep pressure and pain from tendon and muscle. So we'll talk about superficial receptors. Uh, and these are also called cutaneous since they are located mostly in the skin. Mechanoreceptors respond to stroking, touch, and pressure. These are Messiner's uh, Pacinian corpuscles, Merkel or Ruffini cell endings. And so when you dig into your pocket to, pocket to get change, these are the type of receptors that can tell if you're holding a quarter, touching a dime, or a penny. Thermal receptors, uh, obviously, they, they uh, can tell temperature and temperature changes. And then nociceptors are stimulated by potential damaging mechanical, chemical, or thermal stresses. These are triggered by chemicals of the inflammatory process. So anytime I talk about a nociceptor, these are receptors specifically for pain. And anytime I, I talk about a noxious stimulation, I'm talking about pain. Now, deep tissue receptors, these are mechanoreceptors and nociceptors detect pain in the deep tissues. Uh, some examples of mechanical receptors are Golgi tendon organs and muscle spindles. These sense, ch sense change in muscle length and tension. So these are a lot of these are located in your uh, tendons and your muscles. Pacinian corpuscles adapt rapidly to changes in joint positions. So these kind of help you with your coordination. Ruffini end organs are slow adapting, more active at the end of joint range of motion. So these are the fine tuning uh, organs that, so when you're going to set down a cup of coffee you, on the edge of a table, they, they kind of help you really trigger, uh, focus in and, 
and set that table, set that coffee on the table in a nice smooth motion. And then you have no sugar receptors, these are triggered when the normal limits of joint motion have been exceeded. Now the afferent pathways are sort of the highways from your from the uh, receptor to your brain. These signals from the receptors follow nerves to the to the brain for interpretation. So the first order afferents are the first stage of transmission from the receptors. And again, these are classified whether they are covered with malin or not covered. If they're covered with malin, it's a quicker, more uh, fastly transmitted impulse. If it's unmalinated, then it's going to take longer to get those signals. Some examples of malinated uh, afferents are A1, which are deep tissue. They detect your length and tension changes. A2, also deep tissue, length, tension, proprioception. Your A beta are skin, touch, and vibration. Uh, A3 are deep tissue, pressure, and pain. And A delta skin, which are temperature, touch, and pain. The A3 and the A delta are really, they're going to transmit those quick pains, so those sharp, burning, stabbing kind of sensations. Your unmyelinated are your C, uh, your C receptors, and these are usually in the muscle and the skin, and they detect pain, pressure, and temperature. And these are, again, these are slow, and these are more the dull, achy kind of pains. So your first order afferents synapse with second order afferents in the spinal cord, and then travel to the brain. Um, the synapse occurs in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. So you are detect something in your, uh, a pain in your body, and it travels down through the nerves into your spinal cord into the dorsal horn of the spinal cord and there it is transmitted and then relayed up into uh, into your spine and eventually into your brain. Uh, 